Okay, terrific. So, here's what to do now. Download the PDF and you'll receive a set of instructions on how to complete the skid test. You'll receive five pages uh, numbered or lettered A, B, C and D. Uh, and then the fifth page at the back is a four square box which is the scoring uh, and profiling tool. So what you need to do is go through each of the questions uh, and they're all really simple questions on uh, customer scenarios and you fill out whether you totally agree or you totally disagree on a, a zero to four scale. So zero if you totally disagree, four if you totally agree. And you go through sheet A and answer the questions, then sheet B, answer the questions, then sheet C, then sheet D. When you've done all four sheets, I want you to go back and add up the individual totals of each sheet and transpose the number, take the number, for example, at the bottom of sheet A, and put it into the box that corresponds with sheet A in the fifth sheet, which is the four square. So if you download the PDF and have a look at that, that's reasonably self-explanatory, and there's a set of instructions there as well. What I suggest you do now is put me on pause, download the test, maybe do one yourself, and then we'll have a look at the score, and then come back, press play again, and I'll take you through how it works and some different scenarios that you might find with your sales team and what that means. So put me on pause, do the test, and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so welcome back, and let's go through the scoring. Now, I'll, I'll draw it on the whiteboard and I'll try and talk you through exactly what your scores might mean. So if I just draw your four square on there, you've got something on page five, that looks something like that. Uh, and I think up here, uh, we'll call that the sales box, we'll call that the commitment box, um, we'll call this one the incentive or the discount box, and this one is the dismissive box. So they're the four boxes that you have, and they correspond to the sheet letters that you have as an A, B, C, and D. So hopefully you can see that, and that's nice and clear. Now, a typical profile of the average salesperson would be to have their highest score in box D, which is the sales score. So your highest score would be in box D, typically. It doesn't have to be, and there's nothing to say that it should be at this moment in time. But a traditional salesperson would have their highest score in box D, which is the sales box. Then that would move into the incentive box, and the second highest score would be in box B. Now, having spent some time in box B and offered uh, discounts, offered accessories, maybe a free warranty, maybe paint protection, etc., if the customer is still not convinced, what happens traditionally with most salespeople is they then get impatient with the customer and start to put the pressure on and move down into box C, which is the commitment box. And once they've done that from box C, then they would move across here uh, and finally dismiss the customer into box D. So that would be a traditional salesperson. Now that's not what you're gonna get off everybody. You will get a, a fair proportion of your sales team that will match that profile. I'm not saying that profile is right, I'm not saying that it's ideal. I'm just saying that typically, that is the profile that you would get from your sales team. Now, sometimes what happens is that when people fill the test out, is that they get a score here, maybe in box B, which is the same as the score here. So those two scores are equal. Now, what that would suggest is if their highest score was in here, which typically it would be, but then next, maybe they've got 14 in each of those boxes or 15 in each of those boxes, or whatever the score is, but the score is exactly the same. That would suggest that when your salesperson interacts with a customer, it very much depends on the personality of the customer as to which box they're gonna to go to next. If the customer is a strong personality, and maybe is a mature 
by uh, somebody who knows what they're doing and is very hard as a customer, then they might go from the sales box and go straight into the incentives in the belief that they're not going to be able to close this customer and they're going to have to do some extra work. So they start giving stuff away far too early. If maybe it's a first time buyer or maybe it's somebody with a gentler personality and somebody that isn't very intimidating and is very kind of laid back and very quiet or maybe even very young, then what happens is the salesperson in this instance, instead of going into discount, feels confident and brave enough to go straight for commitment. So when you've got two scores the same, what that actually means is that it depends on the customer where your salesperson will go next. Now, the other thing to note here is that as you go through, if you had a perfect score in here, um, change my color, let's go for green. Hopefully you'll be able to see the green here. Um, if you had a perfect score in there of say 20, okay, the gap between each score will give you an indication of how long a salesperson stays in that phase. So for example, if we've got 20 in our sales phase and our next highest score is in the incentive or discount phase, and maybe that's a 12, okay? So what that would say is that if you like for a difference of eight is how long your salesperson would stay in that phase. Now that would be different, for example, if instead of being 12, it was 18. Because if the score was 18, then that would suggest that your salesperson does not spend as long in the sales phase as they do when it was 12. If it's 18, they go in there, and for only a short period of time, because the gap is only two, they very quickly move from sales into incentive and discount. So when you look at the scores, not only look at the direction in which the scores go, but also look at what the gap is and get a feel for how long people spend in that phase. Now, the other thing that we need to be aware of is this dismissive box. That needs to be a really nice low score and ideally you definitely need that to be the lowest score out of all four. Now what I'd like to do now is take you through maybe what an ideal profile would look like for your sales team. Okay so I guess that you're wondering what the perfect score would be. Now in reality there's probably no such thing as the perfect uh, sales presentation unless of course you get the deal and then full up money and that would be. But here's what I would be looking for from your sales team. Ideally we would want to see a top score here of 20. What we would want from our sales team is that they are very much focused on the sales phase. So we'll be looking for the highest score there. After that, we would want them to come down to here. Now, obviously we want to spend some good time in that box there. So when we come down to the commitment phase, so we're going to do our selling first, and then we're going to ask our customer for commitments. And we're going to stay in there for quite a while. So I'm thinking that we're probably looking at being around about 15 when we get to the commitment phase. Now, again, when we're in the commitment phase, what we don't want to do is we don't want to get to a place where we're pushing the customer so hard that they start to lose interest and start backing away from us. So as we ask for that commitment, we've got to get to a place where we can identify what it is that the customer needs to be able to go ahead. That then will leave us moving ourselves into the incentive phase. And that's probably going to be round about 12 in the incentive phase. Now in an ideal world, this phase here we would never get to 
and that should be a zero. Now that leaves the question of what happens if we go from sales to commitment to incentive and we still haven't closed the sale, then I guess really what we should be looking is going back and starting again and reselling. But when you look at the profile of your sales team, you're really looking to go from highest score there, second highest score there, third highest score there, and the lowest score in there. That would give you a good sales team that are doing a good job in terms of selling your products and services. If you like, here is all about high sell, high customer. We're doing what we can and what we need to do. Here is a bit more high sell and maybe lower customer. More emphasis on the sale. Here we're moving into not so much selling, but high customer to get that empathy so we can close the deal. The problem here with the dismissive box is that we're not doing any selling and we've got no customer empathy and this is where the customer walks. So your profile should be going from there to there and your lowest score should be in that box. And that's really what you're looking for. Okay, so there you are. Um, that's the skid test. Sales, commitment, incentive and dismissive phases of the sale. Now you've got everything that you need there just to recap and some things, some extra things you might want to think about. Uh, first of all, the key thing to think about is you want your highest score, preferably a 20, but definitely your highest score needs to be at the top right hand corner, which is box D. And that needs to be your highest score. If your score in box A, B, C, box C is too high, then you need to be thinking about having some, giving some training to your sales team around customer empathy, and maybe around qualification questions and sales process training to get them into the mood so that they can do more of the sales phase before going into the commitment. If on the other hand, your highest score or you've got too big a score you think in box B, which is the incentive discount box, then maybe you want to think about giving your sales team some training in closing and handling objections because that'll give them the confidence for when they move out of the sales box, uh, which is in box D, moving out of box D down into box C, it'll give them that confidence to go for the commitment before offering the incentives. So a high score in box B, which is the incentives discount box, means that you need some training in closing skills and overcoming objections. If you find you've got salespeople or a sales team with big scores in uh, box A, then you've got a major problem because these people are burning customers. These people are dismissing your customers too early in the sales process. I think I've already said, you know, in an ideal world, the dismissive box would be zero. I think in the real world, it's probably going to be somewhere between two and five. It doesn't really want to be more than five because any more than five and we really are burning customers. But if we've got a mentality where it's zero, then your sales teams really understand that nobody ever really falls out of the market. They're only out of the market in the short term, either because they're still thinking about it or maybe they've bought somewhere else, but we can bring them back into the market at some point in the next two to three years to maybe get an opportunity to sell their next car. So your high score needs to be in box D. Your second highest score wants to be in box C. Your third highest score would then go up into box B. And finally, your lowest score needs to be in box A. Now, I'm sure that you'll find this test absolutely fascinating, and I know you'll find it useful in terms of profiling your sales team. If you've got some scores or you're not fully understanding the results that you've got, if you want to drop them into an email to me, then I'm more than happy to have a look at them and give you some feedback uh, and maybe we can have a chat and I'll clear up any anomalies or, or give you any advice that you might need in terms of where you need to go with your sales team. So feel free to drop me an email uh, at, at any point. Give me your feedback, drop comments uh, below in the box. Let me know what you think. I hope you have a really good time with this test. I know it's going to prove useful. I know it's going to help you sell more, more profitably, more often in the future. Uh, so that's it from me now. Good luck, good selling, and I'll see you next time.